Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Well, we thank you very much. My goodness, who's tending store? <laughs> well, in a few moments, as you know, Nancy and I will be board Marine One to begin the first leg of our trip to Japan and Korea. We've looked forward for a long time to visiting both countries, and I can say visiting them again. We make this journey as ambassadors for peace and prosperity between the citizens of our two lands, or three lands. We'll travel a great distance, but I know we'll meet with many good friends and people who feel close to America and to our people. Our country is a Pacific nation, and I mean Pacific in the terms of an ocean, not just peaceful. And this trip will spotlight the great importance that we place on our ties with Northeast Asia and the Pacific Basin. Our three countries share treasures of a rich and varied past. As freedom-loving people, we also share a great dream. Japan, Korea, and America are the nations of the future. We're builders of tomorrow and working as partners to make better, to make tomorrow better and uh, more secure. We can do this uh, because Korea, for one, uh, ranks among our top ten partners in trade worldwide. Japan, of course, is our, our top partner economically. Our Pacific trade has exceeded our trade with Europe during the 80s. This dynamic growth points to the importance of our economic relations, particularly in trade and financial matters with both countries. Four out of five new manufacturing jobs created in the last five years were in export-related industries. We still work hard to and will to foster a new era of equality and economic cooperation in our bilateral relations. The Soviet shooting down of KAL-007, their continued military buildup in Asia, including the development of the SS-20 missiles there, are grim reminders to us that we live in a dangerous world. I will reaffirm America's commitment to remain a reliable partner for peace and stability in the region and in the world. And in both Tokyo and Seoul, we will look for ways to make the region even more stable and secure. Like all good things, uh, partnerships require a willingness to listen and to work hard and to compromise, and that's the spirit of our trip. I'm confident that our bonds of friendship will be strengthened in the next few days. As we reach out to each other, we'll also be reaching out to the rest of the world. Closer relations in the Pacific make for more prosperous conditions worldwide, and the increasing global responsibilities being un undertaken by both Japan and Korea are very positive developments for those who cherish peace and seek economic progress and human freedom. I believe we'll grow closer and grow together if we keep our eyes fixed on our community of interests and shared values. Faith, freedom, and equality of opportunity will inspire us. Economic growth will reward us, and free and fair trade will enhance us, and through peace, uh, our peace through strength will sustain us. And again, we welcome this opportunity to get to show the good people of Japan and Korea that we want to know them better. And we're most thankful that we'll be able to spend some time on our trip also with our servicemen and women over there. Now, I thank you all very much to, for coming to see Nancy and me off. And because some of you have suggested that you're doing this, I thank you for your prayers. And you will be in our thoughts, very close to our hearts. And now there isn't anything left to say, but goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>